Just a couple of announcements before we move on to our next guest speaker. Don't forget that tonight is the Art Gala Happy Hour, which will be happening in Hall D. And also, keep tweeting, seeing some great activity, lots of pictures on Twitter using the hashtag AWE2016. Our next speaker is Dacry's Chief Product Officer, Roy Ashok, who will be up to speak on uh, the landscape and introduce the concept of augmented reality everywhere. He'll also be here on stage to show you how Dacry is enabling this exciting future. Here to tell you more on how augmented reality will change every facet of humanity, please join me in welcoming Roy Ashok to the stage. Just making sure you have the clicker here. That's right. Yeah. You got it. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, and good morning, everyone. So as the Chief Product Officer of Dacry, uh, it's my role uh, to be responsible for product development at Dacry and to bring our products to market. Now, a little bit about Dacry. Uh, we're a six-year-old company. Uh, we started off in the aerospace. I think we've been here for um, pretty much every AWE. Uh, we were known for building applications. But since then, we've pivoted, and we're now very focused on wearables and vehicle human-machine interfaces. Uh, we're headquartered in Los Angeles. We have about 300 employees. We have six locations uh, all over the world in um, North America and Sunnyvale here, and then a few locations in England and in Dublin as well. Now, for as long as I can remember, uh, and I've been here for about seven years in this industry, um, there's always been this talk about AR anytime, anywhere. And what at Dacry, it's our mission where we're singularly focused on enabling the vision of AR everywhere. We want to build the products and the services that enable you guys to develop the applications uh, for this vision. So what I want to do today in this talk is actually to give you a glimpse of what the use cases and products look like as we at Dacry are, are focused on building. So as with everything, as with every other technology out there, uh, it starts at work. We think that AR will win first in the workplace. And for many of you who have been coming to AWE from the beginning, you've probably seen some of this uh, from sort of consumer and entertainment, more on work, and you can see the value in use cases and applications that have been developed uh, for the work, uh, workplace. So a worker uh, uses a device like the helmet um, for, his, uh, for his daily work. It improves his productivity. There's improved worker safety, training. The benefits are clearly documented. The use cases have been studied in depth. You finish your shift, then perhaps you put your uh, helmet aside and you wear a different form factor, like a pair of glasses. Now, the glasses tell you everything about your journey home. It says, OK, go pick some, uh, pick some grocery, uh, groceries up on the way. And then in the real world, paints directions or arrows pointing you to where your car is parked. So you follow those arrows go to your car, and maybe it presents an AR interface on the car to help you unlock and get in. Then I take my glasses off, I put it on the seat beside me, and instantly and seamlessly, that translates to an AR experience on the HUD. So now, you move from the helmet to the glasses to the HUD, and so you drive home, and AR complements and completes your safe driving experience as you go home. You get home, you bring your glasses, and you place it on the coffee table, and there's another experience at home, perhaps on a different form factor that's not a glasses, but more of a projector. So it's this notion of the AR experience being a part of you, following you, being available to you, and transitioning seamlessly from one form factor to another, from one environment to another. And so at Dacry, what we're trying to do is really build the products and the tools to enable developers to build the applications for this kind of an experience. So what I'm going to do now is actually talk a little bit about our product ecosystem and tell you how we think about products and tools here. So at the heart of everything we do has to be great hardware, right? So we have the helmet product today. Uh, it's targeted at a very industrial and uh, uh, workforce. There will be other products, um, different form factors, 
and, if, and we also have a vehicle HUD product in market today. So very different form factors, but always very good hardware. Driving all of this is a very, very powerful operating system. We're going to call it the Daiquiri OS. It's typical of any other OS, very optimized for our hardware, but also has computer vision embedded directly in the OS and optimized for that particular form factor and hardware. And as we move to newer um, uh, form factors, we will have adaptations of that OS uh, for those devices. But driving all of this and having a very common and consistent API is the key to enabling these kinds of experiences. So if you think about the experience I described, it was the same application that was in his glasses that transitioned to the car and then eventually at, at home as well. So to do that, you need a common and consistent API and a common and consistent framework for programming and building those applications. So they're not just portable, but they can also transition seamlessly uh, from one form factor to another. We'll have some first party applications that ship with the helmet, uh, with every device actually, uh, let you uh, turn it on and engage and try, it on, uh, try, try out the, the features in the helmet. Um, there, may, there will be an opportunity to offer other services uh, that build upon an ecosystem of these devices. Um, you can build your own applications, of course. Um, and then the tools to build this, um, you know, we'll, we'll package our API in a Unity extension as well, so it's very easy to author uh, and build, build applications out there. Um, so with this, what we do is we really enable developers to build applications at scale, right? And this is, this is critical. So once we have devices and we have the applications, so it's great. You can test out proof of concepts. You can, um, uh, you can run a few pilots. Um, but we also need the tools to actually deploy these at scale. And this is critical, right? So if you think about an industry, um, so if we sell a large number of helmets uh, into a company, you have somebody in an IT division has to get these helmets, provision them, and then deploy them. Um, so we have to build these tools. In some cases, we will partner, but in a lot of cases, we will actually build some of these tools because they're very specific um, uh, to, the uh, to, uh, to AR as well. The helmet's also on every person out there. So we have the opportunity to actually monitor workers in an environment and treat them like an asset that feeds into the overall intelligence of a plant or a factory. So if you want to deploy this at scale, you have to build those tools, and we're going to do that. And the last piece of this puzzle is actually content creation. So today, if you look at how content is created, a lot of it is very laborious and manual. So you know, we all understand that providing step-by-step -step instructions um, for, uh, for replacing the battery in a laptop is great, or for replacing a pump in a machine is, is very useful and, and very productive. But creating the content to do that is quite laborious. You have to get 3D modelers, you have to hire programmers, you have to hire application developers to put all of that together. At Daiquiri, what we're focused on is how do we remove the manual labor out of that process and automate a lot of that so it's very seamless and simple to develop this content faster. And we can do it actually at scale. So without all three pieces, which is application development, the tools to monitor, and the tools to create the content at scale, it's very actually it's, it's actually quite difficult to commercialize these um, uh, these products, and so you have to think about this not as one product, as one component, but as a portfolio of products and a set of tools that span uh, deployment, creation, uh, and and application development. So let's talk a little bit about the actual products that we have today. Uh, so the Daiquiri Smart Helmet, uh, is, some of you have probably seen this at different um, at, at last year's AWE. So um, the developer edition is actually shipping today. It's designed for industrial environments where, um, uh, where uh, or hazardous locations are, 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 are concerned. So this is primarily a Haslock certified helmet. Um, it's a PPE device. The certificate, uh, this year's developer editions uh, will start so, so that our strategic partners can actually work with them. There's actually sampling today with some of our partners. Our certifications will come in Q2 next year for hard hat and PPE and then later on for intrinsic safety as well. Uh, it's a very powerful device. Um, it has an Intel depth sense camera and that's powered by um, the, the M7 processor. But it also has a dedicated tracking camera in there uh, for augmented reality applications. And, it's, and it also ships with a full six degrees of freedom positional tracker built by Daiquiri ground up. 
The vehicle product is available today in about 150,000 cars and SUVs on the road. Um, it's actually a fantastic product, and if you compare it to anything in the market on any dimension, it's significantly better. So why is this, why is this really important? When, so if you think about the design of the car or the cockpit, it's pretty much done. It's, it's, it's been, um, and there's very little space for other components out there. So what we've done at Dacry is, with, with, with the holographics technology, you have the ability to put this in any car. You don't need to build a cockpit around the HUD today. Um, it's significantly more efficient and, um, you know, on, on, on both power and just the optical uh, efficiency of the display itself. Um, so what I've done today is really give you a very brief look at the vision of how we think about products and use cases at Dacry. I've given you a glimpse into the strategy and the roadmap of what's coming uh, this year. And what I'd like to do is really invite all of you to our booth um, where you can check out some of these demos and also um, look at Altera, which is a project built on Air Toolkit, an open source project from Dacry. Um, later this afternoon, Wally Young, a technical product manager from our team, will talk about how we are revamping AR Toolkit uh, for the modern age and really bringing it to a, to a time where, where mobile devices and wearables are the norm. So thank you very much, and uh, look forward to meeting all of you at the booth there.